time we're going to show you how to tie the D loop. Travis just showed you how to do the soft knocks and we're going to finish off with the D loop. First thing I like to do is start off with a, a piece of D loop, you know, anywhere from six to about eight inches usually works. And the first thing we want to do is take it and fray the ends out. Some people do it, some people don't. I like to fray the ends out just because it builds a little bit better knot when you burn it. But then all you want to do is take your lighter and just burn you a decent little knot and then I like to use the lighter to kind of smooth it out and it flattens it out a little bit just let it sit there sometimes I blow on it it dries it quicker and you can see you got a nice little knot right there but you can tell it has some jaggedness around it we don't want anything jagged around string we don't want breaking so I'll just take it and heat the edges up and it smooths everything out a little better. Like a mushroom head. Exactly, that's what we want. We don't want this pulling back through the string and we'll show you how it works here in just a second. Next thing I like to do is I like to put just a little bit of wax down here on this end right here. It does several things. One thing, it makes the knot cinch down a lot better. It also adds some uh, water resistant qualities per se. And you know, a couple of good things to Keep in mind, just put a little wax there. First thing we want to do is we want to start with a little bite in the D-loop like this right here, just like the soft knocks we did. And we want to go behind the, behind the string right there and then just force both sides through the opening. And then you just want to cinch it down so it looks something like that right there. You can see the way the knot's tied. And then I snug up to the bottom knock work the slack out and pull it tight. Pull it really, really tight on that bottom side so it looks just like there. And you can see the knot we burned right there stops it from pulling back through and you've got a real good secure knot. Now something right here that I'd like to add and I, I'm sure that uh, Pitts will agree with me on is the string on the bottom side if you're a right-handed archer comes from the inside of the bow and then you're going to want it to cross over and go to the top side. So many exactly. people tie D-loops where the knocks are on the same the knots are on the same side of the bow and what that D-loop wants to do is just continually to round and round and round and you're actually pulling from one side. These are all things I know that we're splitting hairs but all the things that we do in our favor is going to make this more consistent and more accurate. So you want to make sure you have opposing knots on your D-loop. Correct. Good points. You'll see we're a little OCD about our stuff but <laughs> it's to the good thing, to the strong side. But anyhow, we're going to finish the top knot out now. And just like Travis mentioned, we're going to do opposing knots. So the way we want to do it is you want to come over the top of the string and come back under to the inside, just like that right there. And then you want to go back over the D-loop material, around the string again, and then back through right there and you can see right there it's loose so you can see a little bit about how the knot is tied and then what I like to do is dress it up all I do is just dress it up and this is a portion to where I do things a little bit different some people will go ahead and leave, leave their gap right here I, I go ahead and snug everything up as tight as I can get it like this and then I'll just leave me a tail out you know about three quarters of an inch long or so right there and the reason I go ahead and cinch everything up like that is when I fray this out and burn it I'm not burning near the D loop itself causing any kind of you know weakening in that area so what I'll do is I'll take this tag I left out and I'll fray it just like we did on the other side you want to fray it out a good bit, that way you can build yourself a good strong knot. And then we'll just burn it like we did. I'll clean it up once again, just put a little more heat to it, and it just rounds those rough areas out. You want to make sure that knot's good and cool before you really cinch down, because sometimes if you go right to cinching, uh, you, can, you can compromise that burnt knot per se and you might deal with some pull through. So I always just let it sit there for about 10 or 15 seconds and cool down very well. That mushroom had a roll on you, won't it? It'll do it, it'll do it. And now what I'll do is just kind of let that slack out a little bit and secure it up. And then all's left to do, you can use a regular set of needle, needle nose pliers you can get anywhere. 
and you just slide it in right here and pull out and it cinches the knot down very nice and tight and then I'll dress it up a little bit and make sure everything's clean and looking good and there you've got your D loop this is a standard length but uh, you know again you can you can cut it a little shorter if you wanted to if mm -hmm. you need it shorter but that's about as short as we like because any if you get it too short you're actually uh, presenting torque to the string exactly. which is defeating the purpose of a D loop or mm -hmm. if you want to span the difference like if you got a big old fat jaw not naming any names <laughs> but if you got a big old fat jaw and need to span that distance you can make it as long as you want to keep your anchor point to your nose that's a whole other subject and then you can span that distance depending on the type of release that you have so customize the length man mm -hmm. D loop customize it. D loops are that. I hope y'all enjoyed this. This is showing you how to tie a D loop into a bow. We got the soft knocks, the D loop itself. Hope y'all enjoyed.